Hey Craig, have you ever seen a UFO? An unidentified flying object or a spaceship from another planet? Spaceship from another planet, duh. No, I have not. Why not? Because they either don't exist or live in a galaxy far, far away. But they should exist and they should be here. Why is that now? Because that's what the famous physicist Enrico Fermi said. Given the age of the universe, there should have been plenty of time for a spacefaring alien race to evolve and colonize the entire galaxy. We should already be part of the Galactic Empire. But we're not. That's why it's the Fermi paradox. Maybe we are, and we don't know it. That seems doubtful. Where are the aliens then, Craig? Not here, that's for sure. Well, I'm gonna go look for aliens right here on Earth in Wisconsin. Well, I'm gonna go look for answers right here on Earth in Wisconsin. Fine! Fine! The, do the door's over here. I don't know what Matt's planning to do, but I'm going to the Geology Museum at UW-Madison to meet with Dr. Clark Johnson, geologist and principal investigator for the Wisconsin Astrobiology Research Consortium, where they're working with NASA to develop methods of detecting life on other planets. Hello, Dr. Johnson. Hello. I, I hear about this thing called the Fermi Paradox. Yep. Could you describe what that is? Uh, yeah, so the Fermi Paradox uh, is related to something called the Drake Equation, which is something that was developed by an astronomer, Frank Drake who came up with a probability formula that said, okay, if we have X number of stars and a proportion of those have uh, habitable solar systems around them and uh, a proportion of those developed life and a proportion of those went on to advanced life, uh, the numbers are huge. So there should be lots of advanced civilizations. And so where are they? Well, where so are they? Where are they? Where are they? Tell me where we are right now. They're at Benson's Holiday Hideaway the UFO headquarters at Long Lake, Dundee, Wisconsin. How did it become the UFO headquarters? Because we had been seeing so many strange lights in the sky and we have pictures of a lot of them. Most of these are off of Dundee Mountain. This one was out here, it looked like this and then it burst like this every so often. This one is kind of unique because the light from the top is emanating off the top of it. It almost looks like a glowworm, but that isn't what it is. Yeah, what is this? It looks like... These are those balls of light that I was referring to before over Dundee Mountain. We see these real often. Okay, it seems like the people of Dundee, Wisconsin have been seeing a lot of strange lights in the sky, and thousands of UFO sightings are reported every year, so there's gotta be some aliens visiting Earth. <laughs> Fermi paradox solved, Drake equation confirmed, right? But the Drake equation, when people plug in numbers, they use numbers that are kind of within uh, our everyday life. So you say that, okay, if we have uh, X number of uh, solar systems that have life, then maybe 0.1% of those evolved to uh, advanced life. And 0.1% sounds like a normal number, right? We can kind of relate to that. But what if it is one trillionth of a percent? Still could be a valid number, but it's so far from our everyday operation, we tend not to use those numbers. And so I think the difficulty in the Drake equation is that we're many orders of magnitude and uncertainty in it. And using a number like a tenth of percent sounds like a small amount, and oh, that's reasonable, but it may actually be really far off from that. What do you think? Uh, I think it's most likely that they came and they left uh, because they could have come two billion years ago when there was just stuff like this pond scum uh, on the planet and not advanced civilizations. And so they looked at that and they said, okay, uh, let's leave. <laughs> okay. I mean, who knows? But we tend to think in our, you know, human time period of, of uh, you know, decades and the chance of them coming in the few decades that we're, that we're alive, we're around is probably small compared to the four and a half billion years of the planet. What do you, what do you think the chances of our, of us seeing pretty something? Pretty good. I think they're pretty good, but you know, you just never know. Yeah. And, off of Dundee Mountain, because you can see so far. It's such a vast area, and if the sky is clear, you can see almost forever. Well, what do you, you think we're gonna see something, or? I, uh, I don't think we're gonna see something, uh, but it'd be really awesome if we did. Yeah. Uh, and you know, maybe, maybe I'm just being pessimistic because I don't want to disappoint myself, because I, I really don't want to get my hopes up. What a view. If I saw something, uh, I don't know, I like, I, I don't even know, like, I haven't even considered that, that option yet. But it'd be pretty exciting. And if we could get it on camera and it looked good, this would be the greatest episode <laughs> of the good stuff ever. Because <laughs> we're gonna have evidence of UFOs, finally. Yeah, that would be, that'd be pretty awesome. Undeniable evidence of UFOs is coming at you right now. All right, I'm getting my hopes up now. <laughs> I'm gonna be so disappointed. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll see what happens.
Where are you? Show yourself! We've made it to the summit of Dundee Mountain, and it's a little bit after sunset, and we were told that this is the best time to see these unidentified objects in the sky. So I'm hopeful that we will see something soon, if we'll see anything. So there's no clear evidence that is accepted by the scientific community uh, for evidence of life elsewhere than Earth. In the 1990s, there was a Martian meteorite that got a lot of press. People proposed that there was ancient preserved microbes actually in the, uh, in the rock. Uh, that has been pretty much disproven. The good thing that it has done is it's launched uh, a field kind of called astrobiology to bring this all together to search for how would we find that. What are you looking for? So you're looking for what we call biosignatures, signatures of life. And, and uh, if we were to drive a rover across a big dinosaur bone, that would be a stunning confirmation that there was life, right? Mm -hmm. But no one expects that. It took us three billion years of microbial activity to reach multicellular life on Earth. So Mars probably would have been similar. So we think that something like this is gonna be the most likely type of life form that we would have either on Mars today, maybe, probably unlikely, or early in its history, much more likely. So this isn't just a random um, bucket of sludge we're standing no, in? No, it looks like a bunch of slime, but it's here uh, on purpose to show people who come through this museum what the different type of microbial forms are. So we would study these as the most likely life form. We go to the ancient rock record on Earth to see if we can find examples that look like this, and then that gives us the interpretive context to go to a place like Mars. Now, I know you're a scientist and you have to sound skeptical, but do you think that you'll find it? I think it's out there. Yeah. And so I, I think that the evidence is so strong that, that life should have started. And the question is finding it after, let's say, four billion years. Matt, what's, uh, what's going on? What just happened? We've captured something on film. So we've been doing this time lapse of the sky and I'll go back a frame. It's not there. Boom, it's there. Then it's gone. So it was moving because this was, we had a second, like a second uh, long shutter speed. So in a second, it moved that distance. We've captured evidence of like something. Well, I mean. What it is, we don't know. Right, exactly. We don't know what it is. Therefore, it is an unidentified, unidentified flying object. Yeah. What it could be, nobody knows, but it was probably a firefly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is, what There's is, fireflies all over the place. The thing is, like, that is a pretty cool picture. I just wish I had seen it with my own eyes. And I think I've pretty much been disappointed with any picture we got of, of UFO if I hadn't seen it, actually. So, like, if I had seen it and, you know, could verify with my eyes that it was some strange object, I would say, here's that picture, here's the evidence of what I saw. But I didn't see it. There's just a picture of it. The camera saw it. So I, I have no attachment to it. Like, if I had, could have the emotional attachment of actually seeing a weird object, I'd feel better about it. But I didn't see it. I mean, that's an interesting thing too. It's just like people, uh, like photographic evidence isn't really enough for, for belief really in anything. It's like we kind of trust our senses, yeah. you know, more than anything else. I, I know that when we were walking up here, I was sort of like joking about like uh, being hopeful of seeing something um, and getting my hopes up. But I think I actually did get my hopes up because I do feel really kind of disappointed that we didn't really see anything. Like genuinely disappointed, which it seems silly because why would we have seen something? I feel like a lot of the stories about aliens are, you know, kind of come from the tradition of people looking out at the stars, wondering, are we alone, you know? I, mean, I don't think we want to be alone in the universe. What would you say to people who don't believe in this, in UFOs, and like they say, like, doesn't exist? Well, they have their idea, and, and, and if that's fine if that's what they believe. But I find that there's just too much out there. I'd like to find out, I'd like to know everything. I think humans have always been interested in where we are in the universe, right? What is our place? What is our context? Are we completely alone? It would be astonishing to me personally if we're the only life in the entire universe. We're finding many more planets now with these missions like Kepler around star systems that are in the star's habitable zone. And it just seems like we're finding so many, it's got to be there. So the question is how we can be clever enough to find the evidence for it that everyone will accept. Hey, did you find any UFOs? Nope. Did you find any aliens? No, nope. not yet, but it seems likely that someday we might. Yeah, never give up. That's why I always carry around this telescope. Okay, 
That's so, nice, Matt. So I can always be on the lookout for aliens okay. and UFOs. I understand. In our next video, we're going to delve even deeper into the cosmos to find out if our universe is actually just a hologram. Good thing about this telescope, huh? So we can look at the universe? I don't I don't know if it's a good thing. You might hurt your back, so set that this down. This is kind of heavy. Can yeah. you hold on to this for a second? No. Thank you. I think oh, I'm yeah. just... Oh, Thanks. that is really heavy. Yeah, I'm going to set it down. Yeah, oh, yeah, I shouldn't set it down. Why? It's yeah, a telescope. Yeah. It has a tripod on it. Oh, yeah, but I don't want it to break. <laughs> <laughs>